This is about splicing and darting plies. With the splice plies feature, we can select a single ply and splice it with a curve, a curve that's on the layup surface and intersects the ply completely. Or if it's a closed loop, it can lie inside the ply contour. It can basically be an open or closed chain. It must form a closed loop with itself or with the ply boundary. We can create a butt splice. If I click OK, we will notice section that the ply has now been spliced. In the laminar tree, the ply is now the header of a group and the two new pieces of ply are added inside the group. If we redefine the feature and add an overlap, we can choose to which side that should be applied. And we see the result in the section here. If we do something similar, but select multiple plies, these are not consecutive. There is a big gap in between. We add, say we want an overlap of 10. look at the section, we see that these plies are spliced as before the original plies become the headers of their groups. They remain obviously in the same sequence location and without staggering, we've created this huge and ugly bump. When multiple plies are selected, we have access to the stagger option. Let's say we stagger by 20. So we spread out the result. And in this case, actually, the section that we're looking at has a scale of two. So to get a better idea of how much they're really spread out, we can change this section to scale one and look at the result. If you're trying to dart to improve your draping results, you can also use the splice plies feature. We can, for instance, take this ply and splice it with this curve. Add an overlap of maybe five. Choose the overlap direction and apply the feature. We now see that the large and small plies are created again under the header of the original ply. And of course, if we suppress, delete, or roll back before that feature, the ply is back to its original state. That is the splice, splice feature. Thank you.